years, the ocean waves have pounded our rocky shores, but the steep cliffs have held firm against the force of stormy seas. And so men have learned to build their harbors of heavy rock and steel. Harbors are important because they give safe anchorage to the ships that carry on our trade with foreign countries. Here, a breakwater stretches over two miles out into the bay to protect the harbor from the high ocean waves. The Army engineers are filling in part of this bay from the mainland to the breakwater to make a wider beach. Bob is lucky to live at the port near Los Angeles. He likes to swim and play in the sand with his dog, Mac. Hey, Mac, come on, help me dig a tunnel. We'll dig one that is like the tunnel the engineers make. Bob looks at the breakwater and wonders how it was made. Bob's Uncle Jim is a harbor engineer and has told Bob how hard it is to build the strong breakwaters and piers. Come on, Mac. Hey, boy. Come on, keep digging. That's a boy. Come on. Come on. Whoop, look out. Hey, those waves are coming up. Come on there, boy. Way down. Look out. There's one right in our tunnel. Well, that's enough for today. Go home, Mac. Go on. Go home, boy. Home. Atta boy. It's fun to climb along the beach. And Bob wants to see how the men are progressing with their construction work out on the breakwater. Large brown steel pipes are laid along the top of the breakwater to carry the sand from the dredges to the beach they are widening. Dredges far out in the bay scoop up the sand from the bottom of the ocean. And then, mixed with water, it is pumped ashore through those large pipes. The pipes are laid on floating rafts or pontoons to the breakwater. And from there, the pipes continue on the top of the breakwater and dump the wet sand and clay on the beach. A point of the new land already extends out into the water. The clay and sand form large lumps. Yes, just the thing for a good throw. Bob inspects a piece. Why, it isn't so hard. He can break it. On the bay side of the breakwater, the water is calm so that the men can fish. And here, Bob's neighbors are hunting crabs with net dippers. Harry puts a squib into his net for bait and then lowers it into the water. Bob is anxious to help. Say, Harry has a bite. And up come some crabs. And so does Mr. Downey. What fun this is. Uh-oh, look out, Bob. Those claws can really pinch. Here's some more. When Mr. Crab sees an enemy, he can fold his legs under his shell and look just like a rock. These crabs are fine eating. Bob really understands now that while the water is rough on the outside of the breakwater, inside it is calm, a safe harbor for the small boats at anchor and for the large freighters unloading at the docks. Later, the beach will be wide, like this. Nearby, a huge construction job is in progress. Bob can see better from the top of the pile of lumber. The harbor engineers in Long Beach are extending the land for a new pier where ships will dock. Trains and trucks bring the building materials to the waterfront 
And the wharf is a busy place, humming with activity. The steel sheet piles are 78 feet long. The workmen signal the operator in the cab how they want the crane to move. And he skillfully operates the large crane to lower the sheet piles evenly on the stack. The piles interlock to form a strong wall. Bob walks along a wall of the piles to a point farther out where the pile driver is pounding them into place. There are many ways of building a pier, but this sheet piling is one of the cheapest, quickest, and most permanent. Gail Jones, the man at the top of the row of sheet piles, is in a very dangerous place as the piles are heavy and might swing and hit him. Gail directs the placing of the sheet pile so that the wall will be straight. Back and forth it swings. Now down it goes, interlocked with a pile next to it. Another link in the firm wall. The heavy hammer pounds each pile 35 feet down into the sand. On the opposite side of the wall, a crew of men on the large barge run the steam boiler and the machinery that operates the heavy hammer. The pile is now in place, and the men move the hammer to pound the next one into the sandy bottom of the bay. This pier will be 600 feet wide and 1,200 feet long. Later, two rows of sheet piling will stretch far out into the water, and the space between the two walls will be filled in to make a pier. Here, a crane is lifting buckets of rock and gravel from the bottom of the bay. must be cleared from this area so that the sheet piling can be set in a sandy bottom. They could not pound the piles into the rock. Large teeth in the bucket scoop up the rock. operator swings the bucket over and dumps the gravel and rock where it is needed. The pile driver hammers the huge wooden piles into the sandy bottom of the bay. piles stretches far out into the bay. This piling will be part of the foundation for the pier. Bob's uncle Jim is one of the harbor engineers. He explains to Bob that the wooden piles will hold the sheet piles in line for placing the sand fill. That is, the piles will stay firm when they dump the sand in the water to extend the land for the new pier. Uncle Jim explains that Robert Keene is looking through the transit or telescope to see the plumb bob which one of the men holds. Plumb bobs are used to determine the line of the pier so that when the pier is finished, it will be straight. The men on the raft are straightening the pilings with cables. All the measurements for the pier must be exact. The harbor designing engineers draw up plans far ahead for a piece of construction work. Plans are made just the way people make plans for a house. The transit is like a telescope and enlarges objects far away. In fact, through the transit, Bob can see a nail at 100 yards. Mr. Keene shows Bob how to use the transit. When the object they are looking at 
is in its correct position, a dot will be exactly at the spot where hairlines cross in the center of the lens. That is how they can tell that the line of piles is straight. Later, they place steel rods from the wooden piles to the sheet piling. Large cranes swing buckets of sand from barges to fill in the space between the piles. It will take a year to finish the fine new pier. A harbor is laid out like a city, with waterways in place of streets. At this outer harbor construction base, rocks are loaded onto barges for the construction work on the breakwaters. Mr. Burdick, Bob's friend, explains to him that rocks play an important part in harbor construction, not only for the breakwaters and piers, but also to protect the filled-in banks along the edge of the harbor. Every part of a harbor must be maintained and repaired to stand up against the ocean storms. And more and more harbor docks are needed to take care of the growing foreign trade. A freight train arrives with its heavy load. The rocks come from the rock quarries in Riverside, 100 miles away. They are loaded on the trains at the quarries, and the long freight trains bring the rocks directly to this outer base. The harbor engineers get their materials from places as near as possible to their work. An empty barge returns from the breakwater for another load of rock. Tugboats haul the barges full of rock to the breakwater under construction and then bring it back empty for another load. Each barge carries a crew of about five men. Now the empty barge is in position and the men can begin loading the rocks. Bob thinks this crane is the biggest he has ever seen. Workmen fasten the heavy steel slings around the rock. They wear padding around their waists so they will not be cut or bruised by the huge rock. They signal the crane operator high up in the cab and the huge crane lifts the mighty rock and swings it over onto the barge. workman on the barge directs the placing of the rock. The men are careful not to work under the rock. They move fast to keep out of the way, as sometimes the cables slip and the rocks drop. The number on the rock tells its size. This rock weighs 15 tons. Huge cement blocks are also used. These weigh 42,440 pounds, or 21 tons each. And so the work continues until the barge has a full load and is ready to leave for the breakwater. Far out at the end of the breakwater, the construction work goes on. On one side, the water is rough. What a contrast to the bay side of the breakwater, where the water is calm and smooth. A large crane swings the rocks from the barge to the point where they are building the breakwater. A man on the breakwater, by signals, tells the crane operator where he wants the rock placed. Many types of cranes are used on a large construction job. Man uses machinery to do as much of the heavy work as he can. Bob understands now the tremendous amount of work involved in building a harbor. He knows now why the birds seek refuge on the calm side of the breakwater, 
sheltered from the strong winds and ocean storms. Here a family of seals are bringing up their babies. They sun themselves lazily on the rocks in the calm waters. There go Mama and Papa. Their baby hardly knows enough to be afraid of visitors. But finally, in she goes. A harbor is a place where ships can anchor protected from the ocean gales, a refuge for the Navy. In ship's language, safe in port. And when storm clouds gather, our man-made breakwater and piers will stand the force of the mighty ocean. Just as our rocky shores have held back the ocean for hundreds of years, 